For the week of March 21st, I'm participating with other creators on YouTube to help raise awareness of the level of humanitarian crisis happening in Ukraine. One million displaced Ukrainian children urgently need your help. We are teaming up with UNICEF, who will be providing humanitarian aid to these children in need. If you have the means, please visit creatorsforpeace.com and hit that donation button to donate what you can. Any amount will go a very long way. Appreciate your consideration and kindness. Thanks for watching. What's up, everybody? It is once again movie time. Movie time. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Movie Time with myself, Renee, Low Key Geek, and you have the Wolf, Blake Wolf. What's going on, buddy? Hey, what's up, Renee? I'm feeling very animated. <laughs> oh! So, how are you doing, buddy? I am feeling quite cartoonish today, um, which is very fitting because we are going to be talking about the animated feature film category. So uh, if you've seen our previous episodes, we've already covered supporting uh, actor and actress, uh, best lead role for actor, actress as well. And today we are going to talk about animated feature film. And it's not going to be a long episode because obviously there's only a, a few amount of nominees in this category. But again, join in the conversation. Let us know what you think about this category and who you think is the the lead forerunner here or what you felt about the nominees in general. And as always, if you like this, if you like us, show us some love, subscribe, hit that like button, smash it, punch it in the face, you know, just, it takes only like a quick second to do it. Uh, and if you want an audio format of this episode, you could do so by finding the Low Kiki channel on the podcast platform of choice and download the episode directly from there. So without further ado, let us look at the nominees for animated feature film. Starting from the top, we have Encanto, then we have Flea, Luca, The Mitchells vs. the Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, just a quick video check there, Blake. Are you okay? <laughs> yes. Am I okay? I think you are frozen. Oh, no. There was a, a notification that came Oh, in. you're good now. Oh, no. You're good We're now. We're good? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> um, this is only episode three, folks. We'll get it all settled by episode 25. So don't even worry about it. Um, but yeah, so we have five nominees here in this category. Now, I know in our conversations, uh, Blake, animation is not your forte. It's not like uh, those aren't the kind of movies that you go rush out and watch. Um, but I do believe you had a chance to actually watch all of these recently, right? Yes. So in years past, I've tried to watch every single movie, including the short films, the live action documentary shorts, the everything. This year, I'm being less anal about it. And so what I'm doing is the I'm, I'm doing the main categories, and that includes like mm -hmm. international features, animated. I'm going to try to do documentary. That might be kind of where as, as we go further down the line. I'd already seen all of the Best Picture nominations. Um there was one year where I got every single category correct, except those like the short film ones. Mm -hmm. It was my best Oscars prediction year. It was the year Blade Runner 2049, and it just ran up a bunch of the undercard categories, and I'd gone with right. that one. I love that movie. Then last year, when I did the horrible project of making sure I saw every single one and was cramming them in, um, downloading like extra weird apps that no one's ever like some weird film festival that <laughs> you had to download their app to get the short film, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had just an abysmal predictions year. I think you beat me by a few. Um, it is not it doesn't really make enough of a difference to see them or not see them um, right. on just the brackets alone. But I do love movies. And so this category in particular, I'm glad we're doing this episode because I had seen a couple of them just already. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I got to to get a couple more in this week so we could have this conversation. Nice. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty much like you. Um, so animation, I love animation. I love animated movies. I watch a lot of animation on TV and things like that. So on this list, there were some that I have already previously watched, but I will admit 
uh, three of them I've watched this past week because they kind of just, you know, flew by me. I just didn't have a chance to watch them or whatever. Flea is something that was only recently added to Hulu. So I was only able to just watch it this week. Um, so, but I, I think out of a lot of the nominees here, there's a lot of strong contenders as far as storytelling is concerned. Um, and we'll, we'll just go down the list right now. So like, for example, so Encanto is your typical Disney animated movie. Yeah. It have music. You have a lot of songs. I know they have, uh, also a nomination for best song. Um, uh, I forgot the, the, the name of the song, but um, Dos Erguitos, Dos Erguitos, something like that, just off right. the top. Yeah, instead of uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno, which is yeah. the one that everyone fell in love with, which is kind of weird and interesting, right? The day after they announced the nominations, that thing goes super viral, and everyone's like, why didn't you nominate that you didn't know, did you? And it's like, that happens in music all the time, where somebody puts out like two singles, and then it's like the fourth single that really catches fire. They yeah. had that problem, and uh, that, that went viral just like... I don't know if it is the best song, but it would be the most likely to win right now just because the play, it's its getting the most play for sure. Yeah, it's its the one that really was the catchiest out of all the songs there. And yeah. I think that's what people really fell in love with. Um, and then you have Flea, which is the more serious out of all the contenders here, where um, it's kind of autobiographical in, in, in a way about um, a person's journey of escaping Afghanistan and trying to him and his family trying to escape Afghanistan uh, war-torn Afghanistan and migrate to Europe uh, like uh, to to live a better life and all that and very touching story there you have Luca uh, which is the story of Luka Doncic the um, famous yeah. NBA basketball player um, and his rise to stardom right now actually it's about well, if, to, to <laughs> if we can win an Oscar a couple years ago for an animated film then why not Luke right Johnson? right yeah. exactly if, if kobe can do it why why not right um no actually it's about uh two italian boys who form a bond and friendship one happens to be a merman so a very interesting thing there um mitchell versus the machines is a funny funny story about a family and living their everyday crazy lives and during a uh, robot invasion um, from a, kind of like a big brother Facebook type of company and all that, which is uh, filled with hilarity. And then Ryan the Last Dragon, which is one of those rare uh, instances where Disney puts out an actual serious type of movie that's filled with adventure and fantasy and all that, um, which I really, really enjoyed. So um, out of all the nominees, what were your thoughts uh, about um, any one of these uh, contenders here? Yeah, so um, I I saw um, Encanto in theaters. I had put off Flea the longest because I was just... Like so many of the like live action documentaries and um, for the Oscars, so many of them are heavy, and it's just the kind of thing that you have to be in an, uh, in a certain mental space to be able to appreciate. Um, I'd put it off. I am I I don't recommend putting it off. It was yeah. it is dealing with very heavy subject matter. They did it with a brilliant touch. The way that they were able to balance humor and lighthearted things and talking about very serious things without dealing with it over too directly. There was, I think it was last year, there was the live action short about the hunger ward in Yemen, which is mm -hmm. an important and powerful and necessary story that was gut wrenching. And no one I know who watched it was left. Okay. Like that was yeah. it, like, it was horrific. Um, even, even just to, to sit through, I think it was about 30 minutes of the short film. I was concerned with Flea, and there's a couple things in there that are like, that hit close to home on, on the subject matter. I'm, I'm, I loved Flea. I don't know, because traditionally in this category, you might have like a Persepolis sneak into the nominations um, mm -hmm. and be taken seriously. I don't know how the the voting body will vote because normally in this category you have the toy story threes and yeah. and all the more like the the rest of the the fair here so that's a unique movie it's also uh my understanding the first movie to have that best international best documentary and um and best animated which is just an absolutely um unreal like i i can't even imagine movies that would qualify for that that's such a right. rare niche 
brands. So I don't, the question is, does it win any of them? And I was reading something earlier today that's making an argument it deserves to win all three of those. In all of them, um, or at least a couple of them, it's, it's in a second place mm-hmm. finish as far as the odds go and what people predict. I, I want it to win this category. I have a feeling that the current voting body might push it over, um, but I don't know that to be true. I had a great time at Encanto. Uh, I saw that in theaters. I, I'm never tired of Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, I could listen to his stuff. Um, I got to see Hamilton on Broadway. Um, I've, I saw it in the Heights opening weekend and saw it a few times in theaters. I'm a sucker for musicals. I enjoyed that one a lot. It was very well done for that category. And I think at the end of the day, I'm more of that, the more traditional cinephile who doesn't appreciate this genre as much as somebody like you. So you might be able to tell me, no, in the animated category, Encanto is technically the better movie, even if Flea might look more like a, you know, someone with uh, like cinephile, European, traditional, more fuddy-duddy movie tastes. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know which one is technically the better movie in this category. That's more difficult for me to judge. And then my understanding, though, is that those are the two front runners. And then Mitchell and the Machines, I watched this last week, and that was a very pleasant surprise. One thing I'll say for this category, it's one of the easiest ones to watch all of the nominees for, just because, like, what, two or three of them are on Disney+. Plus. Um, Mm -hmm. And so if you have access to the streamers, um, that was simple whereas sometimes you'll have to like do what i what i did last year trying to like figure out how to watch a certain movie just under the wire before oscar day um right. michelin machines was very pleasant and fun the thing that i think is interesting is it's it's a more unique animated movie for for what it is it incorporates different styles in some ways it almost reminded me of like scott pilgrim versus the world where it's doing like little mm. flourishes that yeah. um that are just like little special touches um and Whereas Encanto is more of that traditional Pixar style animation. So Mitchell versus the Machines uh, cleaned up, the Mitchells uh, cleaned up at the Annie Awards. It did very, yep. very well there. Yep. And, but that might be a body who, just my gut says, that's a body who is going to appreciate that innovation more and maybe be tired of rewarding things that are just really good at something that's been done before. Um, right. So that might be... Uh, specific to the Andes and not to the general voting body who's going to vote for this at the Oscars. I don't know. If any of three of those won, I wouldn't be totally shocked, but my understanding is that Encanto is the, is the front runner. Is that, is that your impression? Um, yeah. I mean, so for the longest time, the, the two cont- like top contenders were Encanto and the Mitchells. Um, I think earlier in the year, uh, the Mitchells was talked about nonstop as to like being so far best animated movie for the year and then when Encanto came out um, it wasn't immediate reception wise as far as this was the best animated movie but I feel like the last month of the year leading into this year that's when more and more people started watching it and that's when everyone started singing the songs and then you see like the songs really like topping the charts and you know being like one of the top played songs on Spotify and da 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 and all that stuff like that so I I do feel like Encanto like really picked it up like like closer to the award seasons and everything. Um, so it is very interesting um, how that played out. You know, Luca is uh, your typical Pixar film and it was cute, but I don't think it was a strong uh, one of their strongest, you know, especially, you know, with the library that they have now. And Raya, I thought, was very well done for Disney. Um, again, they don't do this often where they do a, a real more serious animated movie like no songs like sung throughout the whole movie um but i thought the voice acting was done brilliantly and i thought the story itself was actually very well done um so if i didn't see any of the other ones i would be like raya would probably be my top favorite right but as far as encanto and the mitchells i think encanto is your formulaic disney animated movie you know you have they do something that they incorporate um, a a tradition uh, from another country. They incorporate, you know, they show uh, that Colombian uh, family and environment, which we didn't, we haven't got to see yet on the screen in animated form. So you have great representation there. Then you have your hit songs, right? Songs that are very catchy and people really love. 
Um, and that's kudos to Lin Manuel Miranda for because he's done it with Moana and 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 other Disney properties and things like that. So, but I do feel like it's very formulaic. Like I yeah. felt like you could kind of tell the beats as they were gonna uh, come to you, right? And yeah. uh, which is not a bad thing. It, they know their core audience. They know who it's gonna attract and everything. So it, it, in in that sense, it, they did a brilliant job with it. Um, the Mitchells for me is the one that stands out because yeah. um, it's Sony Animation. They just came out of um, Into the Spider Verse, right? Which is also one of those animated movies that kind of had a lot of mixed animation styles throughout it and yes. here it's like mixed media right you have yeah. some live action you have like you know paper cutouts you have traditional animation and all that stuff all blended together it's also very current with like the tiktok universe where it's a lot of quick you know like you know um, edits and like things that flash on the screen real fast and you know they play on the whole uh, social media aspect of it again like the the big um, uh, enemy they're going against is b basically your Facebook right who's trying to like you know, uh, you know take over the world with their like uh, their technology and, and all that stuff like that or like an Apple right like you know because they have the iOS's and everything like that um, and but I also do feel like it's relatable to adults because I feel like, you know, there's a lot of sense where adults can feel like the parents in this movie, not knowing the technology, struggling with relating to their kids with all everything that's going on right now. Um, the main character, the, the daughter, I related to a lot because she, like us, is a huge movie fan and she wants to create movies and everything like that. And having those conversations with those who aren't involved in that world, you can have that struggle and, you know, really, you know, not being able to relate um, to people who aren't like you. Right. So, like, I thought that was very relatable and all that. So I would say for me, um, the Mitchells is the one that is stands out the most until I saw Flea. Then I saw Flea and I was just like, wow, this yeah. is yeah, this hit me like right in it punch in the gut. Yeah. Um, and it was emotional and you know, at the same time also um it, it, it gives a little hope, especially with how like how things turned out in the end. Um, and you're dealing with uh, the main character, and it's not really a character. This is an actual dude, right? Yeah. Um, who's also struggling with his sexuality. You know, you know, growing up in Afghanistan and knowing that you're gay is something that's very hard for someone like that to deal with and and come to terms with. Plus, added on top of that, you're trying to flee your country to build a better life elsewhere, right? So it's like all of these struggles and everything. So very, very heartwarming and touching and, and very serious subject matter. And they did a really great job um, portraying that whole story through line um, to the best that they can. So um, with that being said, I mean, the the breadth of animated movies that came out last year wasn't huge. So I, I don't think there's really anything we could say would be like a snub. I think they got the best of the best in this category. Um, but as far as predictions are concerned, I think for the longest time I said the Mitchells is probably going to be the run to run away with this. And I still do think the voting body may go this route. But my personal favorite that I would love to see get recognized is Flea. Um, again, after just watching it, because that that is storytelling at its finest. And it, it, given the fact that it's an animated form, I think it, it's it was brilliantly done. Hey, guys, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. But before we continue, I wanted to quickly talk about Bulletproof Coffee. Bulletproof Coffee is my favorite coffee of choice to start off my mornings with. Why? Because it's clean coffee. What does that mean? Well, one. There are no chemicals in it. Why? Because they go through this multi-step process of making sure that all of their beans are fully clean and free of any chemicals so that when you get the beans delivered to you, it is the pure beans, the pure coffee, the goodness that you've been wanting, the taste, the flavor, and the nutritional value as well without worrying about any added chemicals or anything else put into the mix there. Um, it also doesn't have that weird acidic taste that some coffees 
give you. I don't know how about you, but for me, some coffees kind of give me that weird sensation in my stomach, makes me a little burpy, and it kind of drags me down a little bit instead of really waking me up, uh, which is something that I need for my coffee every day. Bulletproof also offers a lot of keto-friendly snacks and supplements, anything that you need to kind of add to your everyday nutritional needs, add to your diet, and make you and pretty much transforms the way you feel uh, every day. So uh, for a limited time, if you use this code on that you see on the screen right now, low key geek, all caps one word, you can get 15% off your order. So what what is it better than that, right? Check out the link in the description of this episode. Use this code, get yourself your discount, and make your mornings a little bit more bulletproof with Bulletproof Coffee. Now, back to the episode. Yeah, um, I don't I don't disagree with any of your takes. The I think there's the, there's the human element here with the voting body, which is it's possible we might see properties split votes. Mm-hmm. And so with something like Luca and Encanto, um, I don't know if, how many votes Raya would even have gotten, but like those three, if it's if we're going more on style and what somebody wants, what they prefer for their category, more of a tried and true or more something more experimental, those might split votes there. And then you also have the possibility that the four non-flea options would be splitting votes for someone who is appreciating just a more kids animated movie. I definitely yeah. agree with you that the Mitchells and the Machine one would appeal more to adults and anyone who has family or was a kid um, that like that it, it, you're getting everybody in the audience and hitting. So mm-hmm. with the ranked choice voting, which I know that they're doing in best picture, I'm not sure about in this in this category, but um, that might that those kind of like that human element might really factor into who wins this one. And sometimes it's not the one that deserves the award the most. There's plenty of times where there's just some factor like vote splitting that ends up deciding the winner. And also, as far as the, the human element goes to um, you see this more with the short films. If there's a celebrity involved with one of them, it might get more play. Um, and when they're doing the, the campaigning, you might have um, somebody who's has more sway with the voting body just because there's a producer who's a celebrity behind it. Um, In this case, there's the the Lin-Manuel Miranda EGOT factor. If Lin-Manuel Miranda wins for in any of the categories this year, then that's his his EGOT. He just needs the O for that to happen. It feels like it's a matter of time. I, my guess is it'll be this year with original song. I don't know. Um, Mm -hmm. But the, uh, that's definitely not a, there, there isn't a shoe in front this year, but he's close in, in any category. Then there's also, um, I didn't realize this until I saw the credits, but, um, Flea was produced partially by Riz Ahmed and Riz Ahmed right. was nominated last year for mm-hmm. actor. I'm a huge fan of his work, his rap career, his acting career, and apparently also <laughs> his producing career. Right. Um, love that dude. I, I would want him to get honored any chance he gets. Um, so that's that's a fun one there. And then you're about the the cast, Ryan right? the Last Dragon. I that was my least favorite of these. It's just the least one, the, the one that's least for me as far as the style. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I I I'm not you already know I'm not into fantasy as much. And so that one right. was the hardest for me to appreciate. The cast was great. They did a mm-hmm. fan, fan, phenomenal job with in that regard. Mitchells and the Machines also fantastic casting. And I definitely laughed multiple times at Mitchells and the Machines. Um, the it was Danny McBride as the dad was great mm-hmm. choice and the voice it was it was almost like he was meant for that because I'm listening going right. this sounds exactly like that dad wait I think I know that voice but yeah. that was perfect and then um, they had two SNL alum um, with Beck Bennett and Fred Armisen playing the mm-hmm. the silly robots yep those are the kind of characters in movies like that that just make my day and made it so much fun to watch um, that I I genuinely appreciated. In Kondo was definitely it had like the tearjerker moments and that you're exactly what you're saying about the, the formula. Um, but th- I, I, my personal choices would be, it would have to go flee then Mitchell's and then in Kanto like that. And I, I have, I don't know how the, how the actual voters will choose between those. And my guess is whatever ends up being there, there's going to be some narrative like vote splitting or something like that. Yeah. Another question I asked myself with this category was like, does this movie need to be animated? And with special effects nowadays, some of these could have been like Mitchell's and the Machines. You'd have to do kind of Scott Pilgrim type of flourishes on the camera, um, yeah. or like editing afterward to get that effect. 
Um, Ryan the Last Dragon, something like that could be done. It would just be a CGI dragon. Um, and some of the, the special scenes would just be, it would be more difficult to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Glee, that was one of the other things that I that blew me away was it had to be animated because they're protecting this guy's identity. And that's right. their, the name they use, Amir, in the movie wasn't his actual name. Right. And so, and then at the very end, there's, you were talking about Mitchells and the Machines doing the mixed media thing. That's another thing I loved about Flea was they're doing live video during the movie, documentary yeah. footage. And then they're showing, when they show the main character and most of it, his family. Um, and I think they're on screen the rest of the time, anytime it's fully animated. But um, the those are animated or, in my understanding, some of them were filmed and then they repainted it, sort of. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then, but then the last scene in the movie, when there's two characters, and as soon as they walk away, yeah. it stays. The frame stays there, and it goes from mm-hmm. animated to the actual live video. Yeah, that is when I thought, okay, you guys are just stunting now on the craftsmanship <laughs> of this film. Yeah. That that was a moment I thought was a. It felt like a mic drop kind of moment. I if with with what we've been talking about in every category, you have to consider that the voting body has changed. I if this is ten years ago, I don't think I give it to Flea. I think right now in today's climate, in today's climate where there's new war happening and mm-hmm. that's on top of voters' minds and a more international body um, who's going to appreciate stories like this more. I my gut right now is saying saying that Flea wins. You mentioned snubs, though, and we have to mention Space Jam too. We have to talk you, about. It. You know what? It yeah, you're such, absolutely right. How was that not even a Best Picture nomination? Are you yeah. kidding me? Um, Space Jam Two was such garbage. I saw that one. I had to because I was such a fan of the original. The other ones I have, and honestly, you're right. There wasn't there wasn't much in the way of snubs. The other ones I have on like just ones that I'd heard of or seen is like a sequel to Boss Baby, a Clifford <laughs> movie. Um, the Summit of the Gods. I don't, I don't even remember which uh, that which one that was. And then um, South Park post COVID. I think that was last year. And I was like, almost surprised that they didn't get one, which could have really thrown things off. That I'm going to double check, mm-hmm. but I, I could swear that was a 2021 release. Um, but I also don't know. I think it was only an hour long or something like that. So maybe it doesn't. I don't know enough about the rules to know if it would qualify there. Yeah, I, I don't think that was like really like a movie movie per se. I felt like that was just like a streaming special that they released. Um, you know, it's so, it's so weird in this day and age with, with streamers. Like, what's the difference between a movie and like? There's just some every now and then where, um, and if it's a, uh, it happens a lot with the Emmys too. Is is it mm-hmm. like a short run or is it an actual TV series? Um, yeah. That feels like one of those that if they wanted to, maybe they could have. But I don't, I don't know enough about like the, the rules there. So um yeah these feel like a pretty safe five choices i don't think there's anything to be mad about there um i i think if it was anything but those three it it would be a huge surprise if it was raya or luca um but it's it's hard to tell with this category i'm I'm, um my i i think it's flea and my gut says flea so watch and then on oscar night you can um you can mark that one correct for you and and right (laughs) um so Final decision. So your personal and the one that you think is going to take it is Space Jam Two. Space Jam Two. Uh, yeah, you said Space sorry. Jam Two, right? Yeah, Space Jam Two <laughs> with Tom and Jerry take over uh-huh. New York or whatever to be mm-hmm. close second, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. No, I, I look again. If, if Flea runs away with this uh, category, I would be very thrilled and very happy. Um, and I think it could be another one of those situations where since it is nominated for um, documentary and also foreign film, is it nominated for documentary or just? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's got those are the three is international animated right. And documentary. Right. So I think international, it might have a tough time because, again, you have two really big international movies in that category. Mm-hmm. Um, documentary. I mean, Summer of Soul has been like cleaning up like all the awards mm-hmm. ceremonies and all that. So it may be tough. But like you said, in this new environment that we're in, um, that could easily change. Right. And if let's say if I was a voting you know, someone who votes in the Academy and I knew I wanted Flea to get some sort of recognition. Maybe what I would do is I would vote for it to win documentary 
over animated film because maybe I want to give that to the Mitchells right. or Encanto or something like that, right? Um, so it, it, it's kind of hard to see. I think this is going to be an interesting category to see once they announce who the winner is because um, with everything that's been happening, you know, like Encanto getting a lot of buzz late recently, but the Mitchells running away with some of the major ca- uh, mm-hmm. awards and then Flea just having that gut punch of storytelling and, and realism to it. Um, who knows, right? It could be any of the three, but like, like I said, I think for me, personal, again, favorite would be Flea and um but i think the mitchells might uh claim this this award for for uh this year yeah there's there's a very realistic sad possibility that flea ends up with absolutely nothing other than that trivia fact it's the only movie to have those three um summer of soul it's a more traditional documentary so like the more cinephile new voters might not favor it because it's that talking heads style archival footage thing and flea was a more innovative one but yeah, absolutely. Summer of Soul is the is the favorite there with what it's won so far leading up to it. Um, mm-hmm. And then for international feature, it doesn't seem to be a favorite. It could be one of those two. Exactly what you're saying. People, it, it, I I find it interesting. But there's times where people will say, "Oh, I think that thing's going to win, so I'm going to vote for this thing instead and give it some love." And then that can fully right. flip an entire yep. category when it's not really the one that is most deserving or that most people wanted to win. And then we might see something like that happening with Flea, where people go, oh, if, if if I'll vote for it here, I won't vote for it there. So it could end up in second place in three categories. Right. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I, I This is one of those that I'll be eagerly anticipating during the broadcast. Some mm-hmm. categories, it's kind of like, yeah, it, it, it doesn't I, it seem as significant. This one feels um, like... There's a, there's a pretty big difference between the top contenders, and it might even help tell us what to expect in the, for future Oscars with this right. category, depending on if they go one way or another. And sometimes things like that can change what movies get financed, how much they get financed, how seriously they're taken, and how seriously they're campaigned for in the future. So this one actually does feel like a very significant category, and I'm, no. I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, no, same here. I mean, you and I will be watching and we'll figure it out and then we'll either like cheer or be like, oh, well, it is what it is. Right. So um, but I want to know again what you guys think. I mean, I I think this is one of those categories that it's heavily contested amongst the three in in our opinions. I I think it is uh, it's kind of not very easy to tell who's going to win. But which of these nominees were your favorite? Who do you want to see win? Who do you think is going to win? Let us know in the comments. Blake, do you have any final thoughts on this category? No, I'm just, we're right now, our, I'm not sure when this is coming out, but we're a week away from the Oscars. Yep. And so mm-hmm. I'm going to be thinking about this every day for a week, and I'm glad we got to get some of our <laughs> thoughts out there. Thank you. No, for sure. So uh, with that being said, that's the end of this particular episode. Again, come back. We're going to do, uh, after this, we have a very, this is going to be the beefiest episode we'll ever do, where we're going to be talking about director and best feature films. So with that being said, Blake, where can people find you online? So um, I'm online, I'm a mysterious person, except my Letterboxd account. It's Blake Wolf SSN, like Blake Wolf's screen name. Uh, definitely look me up there, B-L-A-K-E-W-O-L-F-S-S-N. I've logged, I'm nearing 2,600 movies now uh, that I've logged there, that I've rated. I have lists. Um, I'm obsessed with that app. It's a problem. And I currently have 17 followers. We're looking to get to 18 or 19 by the, by the end of the year. So definitely yeah. look me up there. Like I said, come on, guys, let us get him to 19. Let's do it. It's so easy. Just just download the app or go to the website and just search it, look for his name and just hit that follow button. That's it. You know, like, like let's make Blake's 2022 extremely yeah. a happy one um, yeah. to reach that goal. But thank you all for watching and we will catch you in the next one. Until then, bye. Peace.